Hello students, in our previous class, we discussed the law of multiple proportions. In our previous class, we shall discuss the law of reciprocal proportions and law of Galeuzov's volumes. So let us see here. Law of reciprocal proportions. So this law says that when two elements combine with a fixed mass of third element then they bear a simple or multiples of simple whole number ratio when they combine each other. So this is the definition of the law of reciprocal proportions. Now let's try to understand uh, this particular definition by taking some examples. So here example is, this definition says that when two elements combine with a fixed mass of the third element. So we need to take the minimum three elements. So let us take the three elements here. One is sulfur I am taking and oxygen. These are the first two elements I am selecting. Fixed mass of the third element. So I will select the third element as hydrogen. So when they combine with the fixed mass of the third element. Hydrogen, sulfur on reaction, imagine it is producing the hydrogen sulfide. Oxygen and hydrogen they are producing the H2O. So here fixed mass of the hydrogen. These two elements combine with the third element. Third element mass is fixed here. How much? 2 grams. So here 2 is to 32 grams. That means 1 is to 16. Here 2 is to 16 grams. That means 1 is to 8 grams. So when two elements combine with the fixed mass of the third element, when they combine with each other, whatever the compounds they are going to produce, they bear a simple whole number ratio. So imagine here sulfur and oxygen on reaction with each other. They may produce either SO2 or SO3. Let us take the uh, ratio of this SO2 and SO3 mass ratios of the sulfur and oxygen. So in SO2, sulfur is to oxygen mass. Sulfur is 32. Two oxygen is 32. So it is 1 is to 1. There is a simple whole number ratio. Let us take SO3. In SO3, one sulfur is there whose mass is 32, three oxygens, 48, so it goes 2 is to 3. So it bears a simple whole number ratio or multiples of the simple whole number ratio. That is what follows the law of reciprocal proportions. Now the question arises, how to identify the given options that are following the law of reciprocal proportions or not? Then here we have to understand a very simple thing that there must be three elements. You have to see here two elements plus one. Totally three elements are there. So here there must be three elements. Let's imagine A, B and C. And these three elements, they have to react with each other and produce totally three compounds, three different combinations. Means A on reaction with the B has to produce AB molecule. B on reaction with the C has to produce AC molecule. A on reaction with the C has to produce the AC molecule. So there must be three different combinations. Now let us take some realistic examples. Let us take three elements. Nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen and hydrogen on reaction with each other. They produce ammonia. 
hydrogen and oxygen on reaction with each other they produce water nitrogen and oxygen on reaction with each other imagine they are producing n2 here not necessary to take only n2o3 there are different oxides of nitrogen you can take any of those oxides but basically three different combinations three different elements they are following the law of reciprocal proportions let us take another example phosphorus hydrogen and oxygen phosphorus with hydrogen ph3 hydrogen with oxygen h2o phosphorus with oxygen p2o5 or p2o3 you can take any of those so let us take another example carbon hydrogen oxygen so carbon and hydrogen they produce ch4 molecule hydrogen and oxygen produce h2o molecule carbon and oxygen are going to produce the co molecule or co2 molecule so basically to understand the law of reciprocal proportions one thing we have to understand that there must be three different elements with the three different combinations so if any two compounds having only two same elements for example let us take nitrogen hydrogen oxygen same three elements i am selecting now but here i am going to get the ammonia h2o and n2h4 then it is not following the law of reciprocal proportions even though three elements are there because nitrogen hyd oxygen combination is missing so there must be all three combinations then such a common such molecules such group of molecules we can say that they are following the law of reciprocal proportions so let us try to see now gelusak's law of volumes so next one is gelusak's law of combining volumes so this is also known as law of gelusak's law of combining volumes also known as the law of definite proportions by volume actual law of definite proportions uh, it was uh, with respect to the mass but here we discuss uh, the same law but in terms of the volume so what is the law of gelusak's law gelusak's law let us see some of the definition according to this at a given conditions of pressure and temperature when gases combine or are produced they always bears a simple whole number ratio by volume so here everything is in terms of the volume let us uh, discuss this definition by taking one example imagine hydrogen and oxygen are reacting with each other so i am taking h2 o2 produces h2o vapor in gas state hydrogen also in the gas state oxygen also in the gas state it is applicable only when the reactants and products are pre present in the gas state if any one is present in the other than the gas state this concept is not applicable so here hydrogen and oxygen just imagine 
hydrogen, one molecule of hydrogen is occupying the 100 ml of the volume. Only for imagine. So if one molecule occupying the 100 ml of the volume, then a half molecule of the other gas has to occupy the half of that volume. That is 50 ml. Then H2O, here also it is in the gas state, but again only one molecule. So again we can take this one as a 100 ml. Now if you take the ratio of the volumes of the reactants here, hydrogen and oxygen uh, volumes ratio is 100 is to 5, that equals to 2 is to 1. So they bear this simple whole number ratio in terms of the volumes because we have taken the volumes ratio. So that is what called the Gelusak's law of combining volumes. Now let us discuss the Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law also starting conditions are same at a given conditions of both pressure and temperature equal volumes of all the gases contain equal number of molecules. Later this law was modified instead of taking the molecules it was taken as the particles. Because when you apply for the noble gases molecules usually does not exist because those days uh, both uh, Dalton and Avogadro thought that same atoms do not combine to produce the molecules. That's why those days it was not applicable to the uh, noble gases, but anyway, it was later modified as the particles, means it is applicable for both individual atom atomic gases as well as the molecular gases. Now, let us take here. Avogadro's law says that pressure and temperature must be constant. Along with that, one more condition is constant, volumes also constant. So, let us imagine. This is a 5 liter container. The volume of this container is 5 liters. And the pressure is 1 atmosphere. Temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. Now try to fill this container at these conditions using the carbon dioxide. And count the molecules. So here I got the count of 100 carbon dioxide molecules are there. Now remove the carbon dioxide. So you put now some other nitrogen oxide, N2O3. Same conditions, we are not changing the volume, pressure and temperature. Then you fill this container with the nitrogen oxide and remove it and count it. Here also you will get the same 100 molecules of N2O3. Now you try to fill the same container with the carbon monoxide. Again you will get the 100 molecules of the carbon monoxide. Now let us try to fill the same container with the SO3 gas. Again you will get the 100 molecules of SO3 gas. Here if you see the molecules, here two atoms are present in the carbon monoxide, it is a diatomic. Here three atoms are present, one carbon, two oxygens. So we can call this one as a triatomic molecule. Here four atoms are present. Three oxygens and one sulfur. It is a tetraatom. Here three plus two. Totally five are there. So we can call it a pentaatomic or polyatomic molecules. So irrespective of the atomicity present in a molecule, equal volumes of all the gases at the given conditions of pressure and temperature always contains the equal number of molecules. Now if you replace these molecules with the particles, if you try to fill the same container with helium gas, you will get the 100 helium atoms. So irrespective of the size of the molecules or atoms, the number of the molecules or atoms always remains same as long as these conditions are not changed. That is what called the Avogadro's law 
Avogadro slab and according to this number of molecules is directly proportional to the volume. Means suddenly if you change this 5 liters containers to 10 liters container maintaining the same conditions. Then 10 liters containers obviously will have to double the number of the molecules. 200 number of the molecules. That means when the number of when the volume increase automatically number of molecules also increase. That's why we can write down that number of molecules or number of moles is directly proportional to the volume of the container. So I hope you understand this video. If you have any doubt, please do send your doubts to the classroom point at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you all.